All right, guys, so this is a 125 horsepower electric motor. We have to rebuild this thing. I came in early, it was about 6 a.m. I brought an orange juice, but the oven was still at 474 degrees. So all the parts and everything inside of this is hot, but we need to pull this out because like I said, this is a rush job. So all these parts in here are about 450 degrees, but we really don't have a lot of time to waste. Luckily, I live in the state of Wisconsin where we could set this outside on a snowy day. It's kind of cold and hopefully it'll help chill this thing off. Now we got the core cooled down into the 250 degrees, but again, no time to waste. We're going to have to dig into this thing. So what I'm pulling back here is one of the line leads coming into the electric motor. And you can see we have a bunch of different coil ends connected to this. Now, the most important part of rewinding an electric motor is to take the correct data. Now, ultimately, it's best to put the winding back the way that you find it, unless there is some sort of design flaw or something we can change to make this better. We can see where this coil blew up. We can actually see one of those coil ends coming in that's completely broken. So if we pull our lead back here, we can see that we have six coil ends connected to one live lead. That's going to make this a three delta connection. Now, for example, being that this is a six pull in a three circuit, we could increase this to a six circuit. We could half our wires in hand, double our turns and double our circuits, but that's also going to increase our volts per coil. So we can see how that stranded lead comes in and it breaks up into these multiple coil ends going out to our different coils that are specifically spaced around this stator. Now, after I've identified this connection, I go ahead and just cut all of those coil ends off. I don't want to get tangled up in them. And it's really best that they're just out of my way. So now we're going to pull one of these coils out and we're going to count how many turns are in that coil. Now, you might want to count an entire group of those coils to make sure that you don't have uneven turns. But once we've exposed this entire span, we can see that we have a 1 to 13 coil span. Now, before we move on to the next step of sandblasting this core, I'm going to go through and I'm going to try to straighten and bend all of these teeth as flat as I can. We don't want that sand from the sandblaster getting in between those laminations and making it hard to sit those down. After we've sandblasted it, core tested and got all of this cleaned up, we can go ahead and spray this with a white insulation paint and then we are going to use a Nomex Mylar Nomex paper to insulate every single one of these slots. This is essentially our only protection to ground, otherwise when we energize this thing it would light up like a Christmas tree and not in a good way. Now here we can see all of our phase paper in between our groups of coils and this is because we have different phases here so we have different potential differences, different potential differences between each one of these <laughs> groups of coils. Now, depending on the motor, I'll connect these a different way. For this one specifically, I like to do the jumpers first, and then I kind of collected all of our line leads going here. I can break these up, run each one individually, pull them out of that pecker head, and be ready to roll. Now, we got to remember that we have six coil ends going to each one of these leads, so you can see how I bring these out. We're going to braze each one of these connections. These are not soldered, and then we need to tie all of this back. Now, this isn't the best-looking winding I've done. Maybe I spent a little bit too much time drinking that orange juice this morning. And wouldn't you have it that our extremely expensive winding analyzer took a so now I got to use this thing that I think was around during World War II. Now this is kind of our last step to make sure we don't have any interference fits. We don't have any coils that are kind of protruding into the board that's going to make our rotor not be able to fit. After that, we're going to go through in all of these machine surfaces and bolt holes. We're going to grease these or mask them. We want to put this anywhere that we don't want that varnish to stick, especially the feet of the electric motor. If you've ever laser aligned an electric motor, it doesn't take a lot to throw these things off. And I don't want that varnish built up onto the bottom of this and causing them a problem. After that, we're going to let this machine eat the electric motor because we're done with this thing. No, I'm just kidding. But this is a VPI, a vacuum pressure impregnation tank. After it comes out, we can assemble and test run this electric motor. Now, our testing panel likes to make a little bit of a buzzing noise after it's been on for a little bit too long. But you can see at this point, we can go ahead and clean up these shafts. We can get everything set up. We can get it painted and we can get this thing looking brand new again. If you remember what this looked like in the beginning, just look inside of this pecker head. Look how clean that looks. Now, you might be thinking, hey, man, that's a pretty crooked pecker head, but that's how that thing came in. And I'm not going to change it. It's going to go back in the way that it came out. It's amazing that this thing was in service running the way that it was, how dirty it was, how obstructed it was inside of there. But we got this thing looking brand new. The last thing we're going to do is go ahead and throw some little shaft protectors on this thing. But let's look at what it looked like when it came into our shop. I know that a lot of people that work in this industry, they don't understand what we did to the inside of this electric motor. So it's important to me of all the stuff that you can see on the outside is as good as the work that we did on the inside of this. This takes a lot of time to complete. Obviously, I came in early. I also had to drink a lot of orange juice to get this thing done. I really appreciate all of your guys' comments, likes, and follows. Cheers.